Next talk is John Rafkin, who's going to be talking about his quest to reach the Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, this will take a second. It's got to render those fancy fonts that Kevin was using. So I can't even move yet, so. Okay, so Honu is a new syntax built on top of Racket that uses relatively unconstrained forms, has uh, support for infix uh, notation, and is extensible through its macro system. And the macro system has properties that we've come to expect from Racket in that it's hygienic, it allows for procedural macros, and it's composable. So what does a Honu program look like? It looks a little bit like JavaScript. Um, in this example, I define a function that takes two arguments, um, redefines the plus operator to be string append, and then creates a new list using this list comprehension thing, like uh, from Haskell or Python, um, to append the current path to each file and make a bitmap out of it. In this next example, we can use uh, inline XML, and we can actually build it as a regular Honu macro. And we can unescape back to regular uh, Honu code by using these curly braces inside each XML node. This is a little bit of a hack in that um, like these angle brackets and division are already parsed as a token, so we can just reuse them. I assume the spaces there are all significant. Uh, where, like here? Yeah, which of those spaces could have that, That's not significant because uh, white space is not significant at all in this language. Because angle bracket is its own token, right? So, yeah. Okay, so how does this work? Uh, in the regular racket world, you take a, uh, a raw stream of, of characters and pass them to the read function, and, and then read spits out an S expression. And this expression goes to expand, which walks the tree, the S expression tree, looking for macros and processes them. In the Honor world, it's almost the same thing, but uh, we add this enforce step, which takes a, uh, an S expression from read, but we haven't yet dealt with the operators or, or the Honu macros yet. So enforce will parse one Honu expression and then pass that parsed expression and the, everything that's unparsed to the expand, uh, it'll pass it to the expand function. Expand will look at the parsed term and register any new variables into the current scope and pass all the unparsed terms back to enforce. It will repeat this loop until there's no more unparsed terms and your program is parsed. Uh, so uh, to demonstrate how this works very simplistically, um, we have this uh, plain Honu program, we pass it to enforce, and first it finds a function definition, C to F. That goes back to expand, which will register C to F in the current scope, and it won't do anything with printf. It'll pass printf back to enforce, and the forest will find a function call, and now the program is done parsing. Uh, so this is the grammar that we that uh, the enforce function will process, and it has some some standard things in there, like I showed before, list comprehension and function call. Um, and there's exactly four places here that the language is extensible. So prefix unary operators, postfix unary operators, infix binary operators, and uh, macros, of course. So how did you find a whole new macro? You use the keyword uh, macro, then you give a name to the macro, then a list of literals, then a pattern inside curly, curly braces, then a body inside curly braces. So in this example, this with closer uh, example, this with closer macro expects to find a literal identifier, then an equal sign, uh, and then a whole new expression, and then a body inside curly braces. And what the output of the macro is going to be is it will bind the name to that expression, then inject the body, and then call the close method on name. And so here's a little use of that macro in action. Um, so the thing to note about the patterns is it's built on syntax parse. So these, uh, anytime you have an identifier, then a colon, then another identifier, that second identifier is a, I call them pattern classes just to keep the vocabulary different, but it's really a syntax parse syntax class. And um, so the ID matches identifier, but expression is special in that it actually calls enforced on the current set of uh, unparsed terms. And this is a key to making the macro system composable because you can put macros in the arguments to other macros, and those macros will be expanded for you by using the expression pattern class. And also note that body doesn't have a uh, pattern class on it because we don't want to parse it too early 
um, because if you do, then this binding won't be available for the parts of the body. Maybe that makes sense. Okay, so you can also define your own pattern classes. This is going to check for exactly what we saw before with the with, with closure thing, just an ID and equals it an expression. And then we can use it um, in our own little let macro, which will pattern match a bunch of these things in a row and then give it a body. Uh, now the output of this macro should bind all these uh, expressions to all the names and then just inject the, the body. But we can't um, put these names and expressions inside uh, sub-expression and try to repeat it with the ellipses because then the, the bindings wouldn't be available for body. So we do the same thing that uh, Ryan did. I, I guess we developed this independently. But if you wrap a series of tokens in uh, dollar signs, then you can expand that whole S expression um, with the ellipses, and the dollar signs will go away once the syntax uh, <coughs> once the syntax is done expanding the whole thing. Okay, so you can also write whole new macros just using uh, the Racket API. And right now, this is a little more convenient for uh, some complicated macros, like the XML macro before is actually written this way. Um, that's because we don't yet have we can't import all the Racket functionality into the syntax world of Honu. Um, so if you require the Honu core API module and the Honu module, then you use define Honu macro, which is a lot like define syntax, in that it just, you give it a name and a one argument function, which is the entire input stream of tokens. And then you can do whatever you want. I highly recommend you use syntax parse so that you can get the expression pattern class. And you have to make sure that you always pattern match something and then use a dot rest argument. Um, and that's the, that's the argument you're going to pass back to expand, and it's going to loop again to call enforced on the unparsed terms. And the last thing to note here is that you have to use racket syntax if you're going to make a, a racket syntax object. And this communicates to enforced not to use the whole new parsing system for this syntax object. OK, so you can also define uh, operators, like I showed before, and not just uh, built-in operators like plus, but you can find anything you want uh, using binary operator and there's an analogous unary operator form. So you give it a, uh, a name, a precedence level, uh, associativity of the left or right, and a function which combines <coughs> the left and right hand expressions. And then you can use it just like any other operator in the system. And so this is the last example. I just want to show how operators and macros get mixed in when you parse them together. Uh, so Given this call macro, which just expects an identifier, a period, and then another identifier, parentheses, and a bunch of expressions for arguments, enforce will first start with the one. Then we'll find plus, and it knows it needs to make a uh, plus uh, block. So, but it doesn't know what's on the right yet, so it keeps parsing. Then it invokes the call macro. And actually, the call macro gets everything up until the five. But the pattern won't match everything up to the five. It just matches <coughs> the parentheses, right? So it'll only match that far. But we don't pass that back to one yet because there might be another operator of higher precedence to the right. And indeed there is. There's a multiplication operator. So then we parse that. And we know the call thing is on the left because it has a higher precedence than plus. And then we parse five and we're done because there's nothing else to parse. So we pass it back to B and pass the result back to A. And then we parse this whole expression. OK, so if you want to use Honu, you just type blank Honu in your buffer and it'll work. But you can't use the normal distribution. You have to get it from git because it's not in the normal distribution yet, but it will be there sometime. Probably have to write documentation. <laughs> <laughs>